Are you looking to become a tier one operator in the gaming world? Elevate your games with Black Sight Studio Terrain. Hey guys, how are we all doing out there? Mr. Skullback, welcome. Welcome to the third of my three sessions today. It's been a long day. So we're two minis down. This is the third of three. Uh, as you were on the other ones, I'll give you a quick glance through, buddy. Cheers for tuning in. So I got this guy done first today, who came out rather nice. Happy with that. Um, I like the, uh, the, the bag colour. Really pleased with how that came up. Uh, wasn't sure initially, but yeah, it worked out fine. I think we might use it again on this final mini. So that's one of the LMG supports. And then I got one of the two RPG guys out. So we got him done today. Uh, that was early afternoon. Uh, after a fish and chips. <laughs> uh, and the first one was after sausage and uh, other, other good stuff. Uh, and that leaves uh, this gentleman here. Um, I have five left in total, uh, so based on that, this was my sort of mid-level favourite. So out of all of them, I wanted to fit this one in the middle. Uh, I think it's got some nice details. Uh, I worry about the wellies, not going to lie. <laughs> uh, he's got the over-shoulder uh, piece again. Uh, I think that's similar to what the other guy has. I'd like to keep a similar colour scheme. Uh, I just like how it looks, to be honest. Um, and then based on that, I don't know, he's very military s so this is one of the regulars instead. Um, so I, um, I want to put a bit more into the sky, to be honest. And we'll go from there. We shall go from there. Uh, he was asleep for the first one and working for the second. That's good. <laughs> You're grafting. You're doing more than I'm doing. I'm just sat here painting the odd model. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, the guy said I've been too lazy, so they've got no excuses now. I can't say anything anymore. <laughs> uh, I'm sure they still will, because we're, you know, all about giving each other crap. <laughs> but uh, fingers crossed, we'll um, we'll get this one bashed out. Uh, we'll go from there, really. So I'll just get so I can see the live stream up. For some reason it's having some problems. It's just so I can see the chat box is a bit easier. I know G always says about using the something else, but I don't. <laughs> cool. Right. So my idea for this one is I want to keep him reasonably tactical because he's a he looks more like a regular. Uh, he's got a better weapon system, uh, better gear by the look of him. So I'm going to go with black wellies because he's still wearing wellies, but I'm not going to chuck any random yellows and reds on him because he just feels like he'd be a bit more switched on. I'm going to have a go at some sort of combat pattern on the trousers and the jacket. Uh, he's actually got like an under layer sticking out here, which I'm just going to go with a, sort of a drab green, like a military t-shirt green. It looks like he's got something on the pocket here. But we're going to go with a plain green. Uh, he looks like he's got a, a shirt on underneath the jacket. So I want a plain green t-shirt, sh plain green undershirt, and he's wearing his combat coloured hat jacket trousers uh, this large sort of over the shoulder bag uh, I'm going to do in the same colours we did that um, if I can remember how bloody did it the satchel on that last model I showed you and we'll go from there oh just killed one of them Let's see how badly he's dead this is one of the two I've got left who's just fell over He's a really nice mini, so I'm probably going to do him last. Uh, he's actually the guy that came with this one that I'm painting now. He's got like a big, um, it's supposed like a big brown coat, and I'm thinking a dark balaclava and some some funky trousers, maybe some uh, light coloured trousers. Uh, and the last one that I've not done yet, that will be the next one I do, is the second of the RPG guys. Uh, this guy's actually got some Beats headphones on. Uh, sorry, there won't be Beats, there'll be uh, Deets headphones on. Because it's always one letter out. And he's rocking Crocs, man. 
Talk about an upgrade from flip flops. Winner winner chicken dinner on that one. You can tell he's got to be, you know, the better of the two RPG guys. The other guy's got like one flip flop on. It's horrendous. <laughs> cool. Well, that's me waffling for like ten minutes. Let's uh, let's see if we can uh, actually do some some actual work. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to start with the wellies. Uh, going to black them out with Templar black. Same for the gun. And then, not sure with the trousers yet where to begin. I'm going to pick a colour and the jacket and the hat to be the base colour. And then put the patterns onto that colour to save myself a bit of work. Uh, skin's going to be the usual suspect, but I'm going to go with the dark skin tone rather than the light one. And, yeah, we'll have a play, dude. We'll have a play. Ah, oh, Mr. Rasmus. <laughs> Welcome. How are your pirates doing? <laughs> so you expect me to write the brand name on the earphones yes but that's not going to be today in fact you'll get a brand letter I think it's a letter isn't it on the earphones and stuff uh, that was my understanding I don't know what's going on with my twitch but it just keeps kicking around to stuff I'm not even watching so let's get off of this a second completely off go back in it just helps if I have the chat on another screen that's bigger There we go. So that one looks live. Let me move this. Let's see if it moves on that screen. Eventually. I can't remember how long the delay. Either way, let's get rocking with the black. Yeah, Twitch has been on problems today, has it? I, mean, I don't know what was going on with it there. I just didn't like it. Right, let's see if this guy's in shot. Yeah. Is he in focus? Yep. Yeah. I think I'm good to go. I think we're good to go. Alright, let's get my palette so it's in a comfortable position. Stretch my feet out. Click my back. Sip my brew. Cup of tea. Not a bevy. A rub beer, for want of a better word. There we go. Leaving it on the background, we're working. Sweet. Yeah, so today's been a productive day for... Um, 12 days equals 12 hours. <laughs> no, 13 days equals 13 hours. Uh, it's um, it's fast approaching now. Uh, uh, Mr. Brenner was on earlier. I was chatting with him today. Uh, he's over in sort of the Washington area, which was cool. So he's been keeping me company. Jim popped in on the last one. LSR was on the first one this morning, so it was nice to... I never see Elisar because obviously of his location, he's completely the other direction. So timings would never cross normally. So again, good to have him uh, come and say hello. Uh, Ralph popped in this morning. So I've had a few bodies. It's been good that I've had people to have some chat with. Uh, I think it would have uh, been tougher if it had just been me random waffling on for three and a half, four hours, whatever it's ended up being up to yet. So they're going to log some hours on the uh, the old spreadsheet today. Uh, and close the gap on the guys, obviously, Marty and G uh, have been working on the vehicles and doing a right good job as well. So it's, um, yeah, it's getting to the stage where I won't need to paint anything anymore and I can start looking to uh, what projects I want to pick up. Uh, I know that we're we're broadening our horizons. I've broadened my home horizons with a 3D printer, and some of the models I can get, uh, I've have got the files for are um, like samurai and stuff. So interested to do some prints of them to see how they come out. Hopefully they'll be good. But I think that fits our our historical theme definitely. We shall. Uh, Endeavour to uh, try something a little different, or I will. Uh, if you don't like it, let us know. If you like the idea of Samurai, uh, let us know. If you don't like it, let me know. You can always switch fire. And also go back and I were chatting about doing uh, like Team Yankee period, wasn't it? Doing sort of in the 80s and I do like the 
the sets that are done for Team Yankee, especially the new starter sets. Oh, that also slipped onto his hand. Quick repair job, or try to. I'm going to cover it anyway, but if I can get most of it off, it shouldn't show through when we do the paint bit. Spent the last two days servicing the FDM printer here. I'm not amused. <laughs> Does it take two that long, does it? East German Cold War. Oh. Which symbol is the East German? Because I like the one with the eagle. So when it comes to my uh, vehicles, what's going to be... What am I going to be putting on them? With the East German motifs. Let's just move that down just a touch. I'll be adjusting my camera. I've had to set it up and take it down like three times today. So the base of it is the same, but it's just the rotation and the angle that I uh, have to reevaluate each time. But as long as it's somewhere on the screen and not being covered by the chat, that's kind of my aim. <laughs> and I hate one P's. If you've watched any of the ones earlier, you'd know that by now. I've run out of two P's which are much bigger so there's not as much tension on these. So as soon as I touch anywhere near the top here it just pops off. And I don't mean in rounds, <laughs> I mean in frustration. I'd happily put a couple of rounds through this guy at this time. In fact this guy's not done it that bad, it was the other one. One of them just dove off today. Thought he was uh, cliff jumping into my carpet. Idiot. German flag with a map tool in the middle. Can't recall the name of it. The map tool. Um, okay. I'll have to have a look at that one. No eagle. Oh, disappointed. Blockage in the extruder. Was it just built up um, resin then, or what was the? Uh, what was the blockage of? Does that mean you've not been cleaning your bed enough? Yeah, I've had a printer for like a week, I've got all the lingo now. <clears throat> it's amazing how it becomes addictive. How quickly it becomes addictive. Why the hell this brush keeps splitting splitting hairs on me quite badly? If I've got some in it, I obviously need to give it a wash. It's just not happy with doing this much painting in a single day. So, rebelling against me. Alright, let's grab a small brush for a second. Let's get him where his hands are. I'm hoping this one's not too painful. The first one today should have been easy, was painful. The second one, which I thought was going to be a bit more awkward, was easy. So I think this one's going to be middle ground. We'll see how it goes. We shall see how it goes. So our gun is almost covered. So, boots are done, gun is done, there's a line there, let's make sure we've got some clean edges. So everybody's working hard but me it seems. FDN can jam from being too hot or too cold, or too close or too far from the print bed, okay. PLA that it's heated up when it should not heat up, oh, alright. Resin printer is humming, running fine, I thought <laughs> humming fine. Got one on each. How many have you got, man? I need a bigger place so I can, you know, set one up and not hear it. In fact, is the fan noise too much? Can you even hear the fan blowing in the background? Because if it is, I'll turn it off. It's just been quite warm today, and with me having the door closed all day and being stuck in here with two heat lamps. <laughs> the ones I use for <laughs> lighting the model. And the uh, laptop go. So 
temperature's gone up quite a bit. Excuse me. Got hiccups then. Hmm. Right, what green for this undershirt? Let's have a look at my little... Oh, quite a drab sort of colour green. I'm going to go with that one. That's number 10. So, for the green for the undershirt bit, I'm going to go with the Dark Angels green, it seems. Can you guys hear the fan running or not? Cool, right, let's get some colour on this undershirt. Hard to tell with mine also going. <laughs> it's down to Rasmus then, if you can hear it, buddy. If it is noticeable, I'll turn it off, you see. I'd rather not, but, you know. The punter's always right. The customer, whatever you want to call them. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh... Revezin, it can smell, yeah, it's just a smell, yeah. To the mud room. <laughs> uh, I know you got to keep resin at a certain temperature, ideally, between sort of 8 and uh, 25 degrees, I think it is, is it? Or 8 and 35. Uh, that's something I'm very conscious of when I'm doing my, uh, my prints. So I imagine you have to be over there, because the temperature obviously drops a lot more. So you'll get different quality as the temperature changes in the room. Depending on where you put it. Oh, Michael Toothpaste KO. Hmm. Another one of these that pushes other people's stuff from. Far too complicated for me. I'd have to speak to the boss and I'm not the boss, buddy. I'm just a monkey with a brush. Thing is, gamers, gamers get all the... Um, the watchers on here. See a few thousand of them just watching somebody play their computer game. Yeah, it does sound like a bot, doesn't it? Uh, I think my focus is a little off. Let me just double check. Just a little off. Do I more or less? That's too much and blurred. That's a little too little. There we go, that looks alright. I'm keeping an eye on it. Keep an eye on the focus. I think what we're going to do for the combat pattern is do a light colour first because the dark colours will go over light colours easier than the other way around. I'm not sure if this weapon should have a wooden stock or a. A uh, metal one, or at least a black one, or a, a, a wood colour. Uh, if Jim comes on, I'll pick his brain. But I don't know if he'll make it on today. He managed to pop in just at the end of the last one for me, which is really nice. We have a thing called temperature control. <laughs> Alright, cool. Got a new heater as well a few weeks back. I think I'm pretty much done with this layer. This green's darker than I thought it was going to be, but we'll lighten it up with a layer, layer colour. So I'm going to leave the stock for now because if Mighty Jim or Eskini does come on, 
I can pick his brain at that point. So you have your printer in your office stroke game room. It must be pretty high when you go in there. <laughs> Constantly getting a feed of... Uh... <laughs> right, so... What to wash? I'm going to do the bag first because it's quite high up. Sticking out there. Uh, the wash I used before, I'm going to use wash. Contrast I used before, I'm going to use again, which is Agoras Dunes. That's a big brush. Let's see if it keeps splitting on me, which is annoying if it does. Uh, change position, stretch my back. Yeah, I've been noticeably making the effort to change and stretch my legs rather than sitting here for two or three hours. Because I only realise it when I get up at the end that I'm very stiff. And uh, not in a nice way. So we tried this earlier and then put a layer over it and it came out quite nice. Interesting to see if that carries forward in this attempt as well. Get some of this excess off. This brush is not happy anymore. Definitely needs a wash with a bit of soap. Sort it out. Hmm. Need to try and not be blocked by the chat. That's a bit better. And that gets a bit mucky up there, so we'll leave that for the smaller brush. <clears throat> yes, for now it might move. <laughs> Depends if you've got addicted to the uh, <laughs> the feeling. being high from resin. <laughs> it's a bit awkward to see on this side where the bag goes and where it stops. So it goes to there, which you can see. Goes under the gun. I've had some right fiddly minute minis today. As I say, the second, uh, sorry, the first one I did took a lot longer because of what he had over his shoulder, which was um, basically like this. But he had a another piece of cloth that was under it, and we wanted to do this and this support for the for sort of the bag and the colour that we're doing this now and then the piece underneath needed to be a different colour that was not going to be too bright to take everything away from it so we settled on a, a muted blue which worked out quite nicely doesn't really catch the eye so it's there and it does its job but doesn't take away from the details of the model which is always good. Is that an epaulette off his jacket? No, that's a collar. It's just the collar of the jacket, that's cool. So I can deal with that when we get to doing the jacket itself. Definitely need to set this camera up to a better angle. Yeah, I'm having some problems with the camera today. Had a lot of twisting it around and stuff. It's uh, straight. Normally, I just do a session, leave it exactly at that angle, and just take it off the boom arm and put it aside, so it's already in a good position when I come back to it. But it's been a busy day. Busy, a busy day. Cool. Right, that should look. Roughly right. Let's put that angle a little bit further across and twist. Right. Let's 
pop the top on that. Yeah, I do like that as a start point. It comes up with a nice sort of colour scheme, definitely. Definitely like that. Right, I need a base colour for this camouflage, which needs to be light, so the cream ish sort of colour. But it needs to be fairly a flat colour as well. What's that one? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ninth head from the end. One, two, three, four. Ninth head from the end. So we're going to start with the skeleton horde, apparently. And then we'll pattern over this. Uh, do I want to commit or not? Yeah, we'll commit. If it goes wrong, it goes wrong. Can always do another mini. I'll just quit. I've done two today. I'm way ahead. <laughs> so this should be a fairly brutal quick layer as we do pretty much 70% of the mini <laughs> in this one colour to start with and we'll see how it dries definitely not use this for this sort of start point before so who knows what's gonna not really done this camo before We'll give it a go. Suck it and see. It's all about pushing yourself a little bit now and again. Finding out what works and what doesn't. And then forgetting how you did it. So when you want to do it next time you can't remember. Good thing is. I think these are on YouTube. So I can always go back now and try, try and find out what the hell I did. Might hear my phone going, it might be work. It shouldn't be by now. No, it could be actually. It is. <laughs> yeah, today they've managed to work out stuff I can be doing for the first time. So, I've been chasing guys. I'm the, the only day I set myself to be painting all day is the first day they had something they needed me to sort out. Luckily, I managed to get some of it done just before I started the first session. And then I delegated to my uh, junior rank to keep an eye on it for the rest of the day. Well, one of my junior ranks. So he was best pleased. To be fair, I'd done most of the work. <laughs> Some nice details on this model. The um, creases in the various clothing areas are really nicely defined. Giving you something to work with, definitely. So this is actually a different colour to the bag. It's going to be interesting to see how they look side by side. I think the original colour that we've used on the bag is actually a darker, darker tone. In fact, this fame, this colour, I think Skeleton Hood is the one that's famous for painting the Star Wars um, separatists, the droids. Uh, it's very good for, for those apparently. You can pretty much just get most of it done in this, slap and go and, and be close to done. With a few uh, highlights here and there and a bit of dry brushing. If you want to go the extra mile. And you are GTG, good to go. Not worried about the butt of the stock of the rifle because we're going to be painting that. Same with the hand. I'm not to get it everywhere, but also not overly worried. To the grooves around the green shirt, because it's not going to, definitely not going to cover that green. Being as dark as the green is. Just getting rid of any small islands that I'm not happy with, to try and keep the model a little bit cleaner when it comes to shadows. Because the patterns, I don't want no hard shiny spots really in the recesses. That's what juniors are for, ain't it? You're damn right. You're damn right, Rosmus. 
whatever I decide them to need to do. <laughs> Yeah, I had to wear my keep, they've got to wear theirs. <laughs> it's weird not being at work. I've managed to grow a beard. It's the first time I've had... It's not the first time I've had this much time off, but it's the first time that I've just not shaved since I went on a break. Um, since I joined up, so 22 years. Uh, I didn't have. I used to get an itchy phase. This phase, I just seem to have skipped straight past that. Maybe I'm just that old and the skin's that knackered from shaving every day for so long that <laughs> it doesn't really care anymore. It doesn't really matter to it. I'm gonna have to look at this iconography when I finish. Scroll back and see. Uh, See if I like it or not. When it comes to the uh, Germans, I think he said East Germans. East Germans? I want to be certain. I'd like to do British, to be honest, but my mate always does British, so we did our time. <laughs> Still doing mine. <laughs> uh, my mate Mark is. Uh, somebody who sometimes comes to the boot camps with me he uh, is the guy I play against most to be honest I don't bother playing that much I just get the odd game of different things now and again but I have fully painted armies and stuff for most and I'm a person that can't play unless it's painted yes it's a silly thing to be but I am who I am right we'll let that dry Problem is, there's not much, not much else on the model to work with. I've got the butt stock, which I'm waiting for Jim to come on to tell me if it's right or not. The skin, which I want to leave to last, because it's going to cover any mistakes that go in those areas. So it looks like we're doing the boots, something with the boots. Probably just do a bit of a grey highlight, I think. Um, let me see. Probably a dark, I don't want it that dark. I'm trying to think how dark a grey to go. Look at that one. Skaven Blight Dinge. Yeah, we'll give that one a go. I've been using the same sort of greys, so trying some of the, the colours that I don't pick off the shelf very often. Looks quite dark, and that's what we're after, really. There we go. Oh, yeah, not used that in a while. It's like tar. There's mammoths in the bottom of that, and saber toothed tigers. Shouldn't need a lot. A bit more than that. Cool. Got a nice fresh palette for the third third time today. No, second. I, only, I didn't renew it after the first session. Because I still had half a palette that was good. Bit of water. A bit more water. <laughs> yeah, definitely let that dry out a little bit. But that'll be fine. There we go. All good. What was what? The stories only happened with ZZ Top. Did they take a break? Came back with a little facial. <laughs> not, definitely not in that league. And bearing in mind I could be back in work in as little as a week. Definitely not going to ever be in that league. I don't think I've got long enough left to live to get a ZZ Top beard. Scary, scary thought. But, you know, I might give it a go once I leave. Who, who knows? I don't think I want it to get that long. Plus mine's grey, so it wouldn't look anything as cool as the ginger ones they have. Well, so is, there's some patches that are not grey, but if we had to go on percentages and you could only call it one colour, the percentage that is grey far outweighs any other. <laughs> so I'm going to go with it's grey. I quite like this dinge, it's uh, just dark enough to be a quite a subtle highlight, which is cool. That's very cool. Let's 
It's going to be weird to not have the pressure of uh, needing to paint more of these each week. Because it's, uh, it's definitely something that I have to factor in at the minute. Uh, to make sure that I've one got the models to paint to make the time to do it as well to be honest it's not I don't think it's one of the more popular segments from us the podcast is the big thing and uh, Jim's um, Jim's games that he organizes which are awesome those are the two sort of big draws um, this has just been an extra little bit somewhat a bit different I think um, so I'll be interested to see if they even want to continue it or not I shall find out just doing a bit of highlighting while we've got the time so as we're doing it at the end, we'll do the gun as well shortly. Welcome to the grey and white beer club. <laughs> oh, no white. Not that old yet. In fact, I, I just wouldn't be that fashionable. You know, it's, it kind of looks good when it gets to that stage. It's the in-between stage that's not good. Yeah. I could dye it just for a laugh and see what happens. I'm sure there's beard dyes kicking around, isn't there? Just for just for beard? Instead of just for men? Something along those lines. Cool, right, so happy with that. So I'm just gonna edge the top of the barrel. It's weird not to do an AK. It was like doing the um, RPG earlier. You kind of so used to doing the AKs now, <laughs> and even the uh, LMGs. I've got used to doing them. So it's, uh, it's weird to come to a gun that's a different shape. In fact, I did have the um, what was it? Like a six-shot pistol on the gang leader, the one that had the gold, the big gold chain and stuff on him. That was a. Uh, so I had to learn to paint differently, which is always cool. Well, it is once you do learn to paint it differently in the process of trying to learn can not be as fun. Right, I think that's the first highlight of the gun done and the boots. So we'll let that dry. Let's have a look at the rest of them, make sure... So I'm going to leave the, the bag actually just looks fine as it is. The way it's sat already, there's a bit there that I'll probably clear up, but really happy with how that's sat down. Yours has gone white with the odd red and grey. <laughs> so you got right, you got like a flag going on, dude. Cool. So I look at my old Combat 95 stuff from the British military. Essentially, it's made up of four colours uh, like a tan or a light colour, which we've already got now. A brown, a green, and a black. So I can bin the tan, and we're going to put these three on. Uh, I've gone for a goth or brown, which is kind of a flat brown. Uh, a little bit punchy, uh, warpstone grey, glow. I think that's going to be too much, so I'm going to stop that right now. Try and find a darker green. Uh, you know what? I think it'll be a base colour I'll end up using. Let's have a look what we've got in base colours. Yeah, I think that's better. So I'm going to go with the Caliban Green, so much darker. And the classic, you know, a bad and black. If you're going to go black, go black. Hmm. So this is all new. I, I painted Flames of War tanks in a similar method that we're about to approach. <laughs> but similar is not the same. And uh, I'm going to go 
basically I'm going to go from light to dark, so I've already got the tan on it, I'm going to go brown next, then green, because the green looks darker, and then the black to finish, so I can cover up any really glaring mistake, oh another one look, full of, look at that, it's like a big bogey hanging out of its nose. Cool. Right, now the thing with this is I don't want to over thin in it because over thin in it, that's not even a word, over thin it because otherwise I won't be able to control properly where it goes. I need to be a bit a bit better with my water mixing than normal. Yeah, I think we're there. Right. I think this is going to be one, one of those things you won't know until you finish if it looks like crap or not. Uh, now, one thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to grab an image on my phone of, I'm just trying to think of, it's one thing, I know the pattern, but I don't know the size in relation to body, um, you know, of each of the sort of, the patterning. So we're on MTP in nowadays, but old British Combat 95. Who knows what they're using? But that's Combat 95 from in the day. That's what I've got stored away that will never fit me anymore because I'll never be that skinny again. Uh, it's really small in comparison. You know, trying to achieve that on this is going to be ridiculously difficult. Um, we'll get something similar, but I don't think we'll be getting it that small. So I'm gonna begin I'm gonna begin on the back of the top so I can see what I'm doing. And see and try and get a rough. One of the great things about this method that we're gonna try and do you don't have to highlight it because it's just going to be the colours of the combats that make it what it is. So you can kind of just blotch it around and it's how you layer them up. It's, there is a visible difference which is nice but it's not too much. So we've painted just, it's actually a smaller area than it looks there, a little bit there, a little bit there. We'll keep it quite tight and not too big, is the plan. And then kind of uh, see how it goes. I am totally, totally out of my comfort zone right now. And for me, that's, that's, that is a part of the painting process, to be fair. I think to be fair has become my uh, saying of the day. So, I have no reason or rhyme other than consistent, sort of roughly the same size, some smaller, some a little bigger, but the distancing is trying to get an even, even distance is the, uh, is what I'm pushing for, and I don't want any lightning bolts, I want blotches, not straight edges where I can. So I enjoy doing new stuff. It's it's always nice when it turns out good. Uh, I suppose doing the first first attempt on a live stream is probably not the best idea. <laughs> you got nowhere to hide at all. Makes me chuckle. It's been good. I've been watching that uh, Laughing Boy's been smashing through his Hero Quest stuff on OTT on the um, the community sort of live streams. I don't know if any of you guys have had time to watch any of those or if that would even interest you. It's uh, it's good to see that the community is sort of digging in with the content as well as the OTT crew keeping up everything as well. But then I'll learn by it. <laughs> yeah. They say you learn more from your mistakes, but I'd rather just not make them. 
I get it right first time, I don't need to learn anything because I got it right first time. <laughs> We're, we're currently at desert cam mode, I think. This is definitely a, a good brown for deserts as well. And the initial layer. I could see this on DAC. You know, um, some of the North Africa stuff. It also, this initial layer is very Waffen SS. Um, with the dots. If you, you, you know, that's... It's a very pale, yeah. I think that would work as the some of the P pattern and that on the the Germans. One thing I'm going to do is just going to do a few of these strands in a different some of the different colours as they go around. It's a nice little set of detail at the the bottom of the jacket, to be honest. I'm thinking about what to do as a game next if I get the opportunity to do something in the UK as SITREP uh, like at Salute next year or UK Games Expo potentially uh, running um, a demo game if I can get a table for it because um, you don't see we don't see modern a lot do we at these events you see them obviously <sighs> Spectre are there um, providing minis uh, sometimes they might have a demo or two but the sort of at a club level and you don't really see them very often and I backed a Vietnam era Kickstarter for some scenery that you can 3D print which is lovely and having the 3D printer now means I can potentially produce all the scenery in house without it costing me an arm and a leg if I had to buy it all. That being said, if you guys were over in the UK, would a Vietnam game be something that you'd be interested in or not? Or am I just aiming at the wrong era? I feel like I put a lot of pressure on myself today trying to do three minis, three sessions. It's been quite tough going. I'm definitely going to feel the ache tomorrow from sitting in the wrong position too much. So Scobach said Vietnam would be an interesting game. Cool. Rasmus, sure. But, but I am no for playing anything. I mean down, I imagine that is. That's cool. uh, Rasmus is saying. Always hard for a normal mini game. No one wants to play the irregulars here. Oh, I'd be happy to cream um, people with uh, Viet Cong. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine where you are, potentially whatever the irregulars are, can be uh, problematic. I'm always, like, the bad guy. I live in the world of the good guy. <laughs> Therefore, if I get the opportunity, I'm one of the few people it's difficult to throw it in my face as well, because uh, I can just prove that I don't believe in what I'm saying based on the fact my job description is uh, is what it is. Yeah, Jim's uh, Jim's game for the transit for 13 days equals 13 hours uh, I'm definitely want to re-roll in for the bad guys while uh, G, Marty and the team play the good guys um, and then when it comes to the tabletop one I'm the same I want to be uh, I want to be the militia trying to do the bad stuff but we'll see we'll see um, it might be difficult because I'm not there um, that's a big part of 
it's going to be a live game or a set of live games and even if I wanted to go there I might not be able to you know because of um, the situation we're all in so you can see I'm just literally chucking random patterns at this some of them look like leaves actually <laughs> it's not planned it's just a level of consistency <laughs> We noticed while while playing HK Ops. Why was that? There's you know what? There's no way Bubbles would not have been shot. Bubblegum, whatever the hell that bloody thing's called. He should have been dead as a doornail, full of AK rounds. Very disappointed. I feel like I was cheated out of a and I love dogs as well. But anybody stood near a dog that's barking, growling, spitting that is about to go and nab at somebody if you're if you're 100 percent sure it's not you you'll still shoot it dogs are scary attack animals in general and animals attacking you are pretty scary because it's just something you're not used to camelback spiders running towards you in a desert environment is the equivalent of a face hugger in aliens coming out the egg and trying to get you. You don't care. You just try and either run away or, well, I say kill it, but it's really hard to kill normally. Normally run away. And all it's doing is trying to get into your shadow. <laughs> Bloody things. They're not even a spider, they're like a scorpion. Right, coming up to the hat now. Just realised that um, this may be the only guy in the the whole force that'll actually be wearing <laughs> real camouflage. You bet he's got to be like a commander, hasn't he? That or he's got to have an extra, you know, spot me save. Because the GRS are in like black combat gear that you'd expect, you know, like SWAT and you know contractors to be wearing. And there are some trees in the compound and some green areas. So if this guy stood in a tree line, I definitely want him to have an extra extra save or something to spot him after all this hard work. Money it depends if it looks like crap, I suppose it won't won't actually do anything for him. Cool. So, not too bad. Just trying to see if there's any there's a quite a large area with nothing. Just generally looking for any obvious gapping. It has ended up looking like leaf patterns, it's quite funny. I think you can already see there's almost like a level of, especially here on the jacket, that that, that would work quite well for a desert cam. The hidden sniper. Oh, yes. Was there a hidden sniper? <laughs> that means I'll have to put a sight on the bloody weapon. <laughs> cool. Right. Uh, are we going to do another highlight in the boots, or is that enough? Mm, probably a little. Another highlight in the boots. Uh, I'm going to grab some Mechanicum Standard. Mechanicus Standard Grey. Grey cups. Chuck some on the pallet. Now I'll use this for the boots and the gun, just to bring it up a light highlight while we let all that settle in and dry. Oh, wrong angle. Always move the model around the brush, not the brush around the model. Makes your life a lot easier. So I've been told. Man, you letting you guys decide on what's being written on the back of the jackets is not making my life easier. I've learned that as a lesson. Especially if Joey's on. Joey wanted a bloody basketball shirt. Our youngest team member. <laughs> Joey, you're awesome. Just saying. But man, were you a pain in my ass that day. <laughs> 
Am I allowed to say ass to young children? I'm not sure. I'm not even sure what it is in America. They have the names a different way around than we do. Front and back, that is. Just doing some rough and ready highlights. Just to give it some depth. It's a good point. I, mean, I don't think we've got a sniper in the team. I don't think they'd have had any weapon that was accurate enough, and definitely not a sighting system unless they stole it. They hadn't got any armory at the uh, compound, so they would have got it from there. That would have been quite good if they had. Although, if one of the vehicles is destroyed on the way in, one of the teams doesn't make it, they have some decent weapons in there that I could transfer to my militia, or oh, sniper. <laughs> Problem is the uh, GRS has a sniper and it's a good one. It's a real one, so kind of screwed. Unless we do the um, what was the film called? Uh, American Sniper buddy, have him a thousand yards away on a rooftop under a sheet, uh, popping rounds down. Cool, I'm happy with that. That's the boots done. Back to the weapon. I'm not sure we're not going too much on. It's weird because I've got one, one screen. For some reason, I've got two screens up and one's got the chat on and one hasn't. Let me move the one that hasn't got chat out of the way. <laughs> so I looked up then and it looked like it was not in the centre, but the chat for me is there. So I want to keep it roughly here. <laughs> Learning how to paint on camera. I was so nervous the first time as well. Like proper stomach twisting stuff. Which is silly because pretty much all my mates were the only people watching. But now I'm uh, pretty comfortable with it. You end up doing what you do. If it's right, it's right. If it's wrong, it's wrong. You do your best when you're in the moment. That's pretty much what life's about, isn't it? If it sucks, it sucks. Let's get the barrel on the other side. Can't see the magazine from that side, so that's fine. Right, what to do next? I think next I'm just going to bring up this green sticky out shirt that we've got. And what we're going to use for that. In fact, I'm going to use the camo, Caliban green that we're actually going to use on the, um, the camo. Which will give me an opportunity to see what it looks like before it potentially screws up crap loads of stuff. See, sometimes I have half a brain. Depends who's got the brain cell that day in the family. It was only me and my mum. It's a long way to come from Turkey with a brain cell. I think it's digital now, so you can transfer it by phone. Just download it into myself. Yeah, I'm definitely losing my mind. I've been painting too much today. Cool, so let's see if this lightens it up that much or if it's really, really dark. That's yeah, still pretty dark. I think that's going to be too dark. I'm very glad now that we chuck this on just to see what it looks like. Because I think this is going to be too dark for what I want. Yeah, I want it to be a bit more punchy than this. Cool. So we'll let that dry. So Caliban Green is out. What else have I got green? I think it's going to be what Stone or whatever it is. what Glow. Actually, it's definitely too light. 
Uh, what my screen? A little bit too wide, but not a huge amount. That one's too bluey. I never struggle for greens normally, but that's the closest I've got. So I'm going to put this on over the dark bit and see what it's like, and then I might have to do a small patch on the uh, the hat or something just to see what it's like on there. Uh, it's a little bit punchy, but not too bad. Maybe we chuck some black into it to see if that. Uh, takes the edge off, or a darker green than Caliban. Being a base colour that should be quite strong. Now, I might be conning myself here because I've thinned it as I would for painting a layer. No, that's nothing to worry about. at 8 o'clock. Okay everybody clapping for the NHS. Apologies for the NHS for you watching. Uh, I do support you. I'm just not currently stood at my window on my door clapping. But I don't think any less here. In fact my friend George is uh, works at my local hospital in A&E. Hope he gets well soon. He's currently uh, isolated. Uh, him and his uh, his other half. I'm currently down sick with some of the symptoms. So get well soon, Mr. George. Get well soon. Hopefully, people are doing the. Uh, two metre distancing better this time so the last time Britain did this there was pictures on like London Bridge and people literally stood shoulder to shoulder making the the problem worse potentially um, which had a bit of a backlash from even ministers brought it up and doctors saying they appreciate it but if it's if it's going to be a A safety thing, and they'd rather it didn't happen. Cool. Seems to dry okay. Might be alright. It might be alright. Right. Uh, I'm going to go with a wooden stock in the end because I think it'll break up the colours that are around it quite nicely. Uh, with that in mind, safety first, yeah, right. It's always safety first. Uh, Mom, thank Brown. Never make yourself, uh, you know, it's first part of call for triage and stuff. Win the firefight before you put yourself at risk. So, no point in you being as bad as the person you're trying to help. So, let's do this butt stop. It's a little bit weird actually because obviously we've got our rules in the UK and I imagine you guys, each country's got their own as well. Uh, and while in a lot of ways they're consistent, in some ways they're not. I don't know what's still open and what's not accessible anymore for for other nations. I've just, I barely know what's happening in the UK. I just do what I'm supposed to do and stay in the house. I've got once a week to... Um, pick up shopping uh, some, sometimes I don't even need to do that and by the end of the week I don't bother which is why it's going to be really weird to go back outside on a regular basis again once this is all over I can't remember how many weeks we've been in now 
think it's five or six weeks I've been in, I've probably been outside seven or eight times to drive to a shop or a petrol station as part of going to a shop to put fuel in the car at once um, and that's it that is it each state over here has their own rules all right that must be complicated because if you're driving to another state you can do stuff wrong I suppose cool so this really bright green is is going on if it all ends up being too bright I can always wash it to dull it down see how it sits see how it sits Oh, it doesn't taste too bad actually. Normally greens greens don't taste very nice. Right, so this bit we want to go through the lighter areas. Does this cover the browns? Again, I'm back to my uh, digital point of reference. The green doesn't cover the brown, the brown covers the green. So that definitely means I've done them in the wrong order. Balls. Lesson to self. Don't have to be that part in the way. <laughs> it's not going to be now. It's only a cheap knockoff. never thought to look first you see to see which one sat the highest because it's obvious when you look at it when you who knows year to year the pattern might change Uh, most suggestive stay at home, so no crossing state lines. Oh, okay. Man, yeah, I suppose, yeah, it's difficult to uh, justify it. Uh, the UK is kind of the same, but they've had people heading for fishing trips that they've stopped in cars and then asked why by the police. And then got a fine for heading from London to Devon to, you know, go on a fishing trip because they're sick of being in the house. Shame, really. Mind you, I suppose in a family unit it can be pretty tough with um, all being in at the same time all the time for extended periods. We've definitely got a lot more lax over here. I'm looking at my personally, I've seen out the window at the estate, and people just cutting around like normal again. Uh, itchy arm. Or else he did buy the knockoff suit at Camo Plus. <laughs> it's very, very possible. Very, very, po very likely. Never mind possible. <laughs> I get the feeling they're a lot more green on the. This guy looks like he's been to the uh, Walmart version, you know, the uh, the one that makes them look like a tree, and then they have to wear an orange jacket. It's got like leaf patterns on it and branches, and you know, if they stood in front of the exact like something they stood in front of a photograph of something. I didn't see G wearing any camo, I wonder if she has any. Some Marty and that. So I didn't notice as much as I thought I would. Never thought. Maybe they just wear it when they're in certain areas. They wore stuff with like gun logos, but not. Or ranges. I think Marty had a range hat on, or his, 
he teaches small arms stuff I think so it might have been to do with that it's quite time consuming this because you have to kind of do an individual little patterns everywhere Should I get on the inside of the legs? There's no no gaps. I'm starting to think that it'd be nice to have had the green as the first layer to give that when you I'm saying that North Africa's got some sandy areas and some you know that dusty environment that this would actually fit quite well in with patches of green so it kind of fits quite well to what we're looking for I hope right let's do the bottom edge of this jacket again but different ones this time the green just to break it up again not doing every other one just the odd one we use the black to break up the rest and then keep the the desert yellow sort of look as well. Oh, caught the camera, apologies. It's not me shaking for a change, it's the camera. <laughs> right, I'll start at the back again, roughly the same area. I'm very much a creature of habit and routine. It's kind of been indoctrinated into me over the years, even from an early age before doing military service. My dad was always one to have me up and about, he was never one to stay in bed, and all the best cartoons were on early, so I used to get up. Didn't even need an alarm, really. I just knew that I didn't want to miss my favourite shows. <laughs> Thinking of reskinning the first edition of Drops on Commander for a 10 mil Red Dawn 80s version game. That'd be cool. Red Dawn. That's the North Korean. North Korean invasion of the US? Or is it China? I've sadly not read the book. I've only seen the two films. There's two versions of it in there. In fact, one of them's got the Hemsworth in it. I think it's the younger brother. Liam. Liam Hemsworth? Or is it Chris? I'm not sure, actually. I do remember there was a good computer game of that. I can't remember its name, but I do remember going through the town and paratroopers coming down from the sky, and yeah, and it, it was kind of like a militia. It was a uh, first-person shooter. It was tough, tough game, good game, good game, good game. That's actually part of the camo. thing is like we said it's the original where the USSR invaded oh, okay the US yeah I think they changed it in the next one to China or North Korea make sure he's still in properly I mean, if their economy crashes at any point and, you know, anarchy bit sets in, it, it's got the potential. Or if this virus hit them particularly hard. But, I mean, the, don't get me wrong, they've still got all the weapon systems that are bunkered up and ready to go, but 
if the troops are ill, the infantry is ill. I mean, you can send nukes one way and the other way, but you're not going to bomb yourselves at home if a, a massive raiding force comes. Or are you? Uh, I think that's in pretty much enough on the jacket. Yep, so we've got to the hat. Well, I've still got to do this for black yet. How are we doing for time? One hour twenty. Actually, not as bad as I thought. The good thing is he's got quite a lot of coverage from just the clothing. But I'm definitely feeling this for desert cam. It's very similar to what I've got. Old to desert cam for us. MTP does everything now. The multi pattern that we use is pretty much for every environment now. Or at least at the minute. Until they change it again. Quite a few nations seem to have settled on the same one as well. Oh. You did an imprint in a residential area in 10mm, need to find some minis. Oh, cool! And found 10mm modern minis to print infantry to be next. Yeah, I mean, <coughs> excuse me, a lot of the free sites are, are okay, but when it comes down to 10mm and that, you really need a good file, don't you, I suppose? Finding that's such a niche market to get a good file for that is probably quite difficult with second world war you'd probably be okay but modern is um, definitely not as much loved as uh, a lot of other periods but it has so much scope to be interesting scenarios up to a point uh, even more so when you're looking at it from a special forces perspective like Spectre does. Small forces of uh, skirmish sized battles. Bigger stuff is, you know, bigger guns, better tech wins, I suppose, air superiority, all that. Okay. A little bit in there. That's the green stuff. So yeah, he's coming out okay at the minute. For a first attempt, not too bad. Uh, happy with the shirt, so so. I think what we'll do is a hard edge a highlight now that we've got this up and running. I'll use the thicker stuff to give it a bit more visible punch. Saying edge highlight is actually quite awkward to get to. I'm gonna have to use the tip of the brush, which I don't like doing. Can have some jam on toast for supper. Although my jam is different to American jam. I don't know what they call it. Jello? Jelly? I don't know. They're crazy. I'm having a jam preserve made from strawberries on toast for supper. There's some clarification for you guys. Oh, right, quick stretch. Might make infantry markers just to square the cross room for a dice for a fill. It's just a card. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can, I can see what you mean there. Um, uh, something that Warren and I have talked about for Centre Zero is potentially using a single miniature of the right representation, so that's a, a larger scale, and then keep the game 10 mil. So the base is a, a, a squad, but the mini on it could be 15 mil, but it's a 6 mil game we're playing. Uh, that would be the equivalent of a squad being the size of the base to move around and such and a single mini giving you a visual representation of what it is 
So you could go that way and then sort of get around the problems of the the scale of the minis. So at this point I'm going to put the skin on next before I do the black. Uh, trusty old bugman's glow. If I was going to do dark, I'm not going to do them dark because uh, all this gear is really light and it'd be lost in it in dark. With a dark green one, which I'll do for the other. I say the other. There is no other. For another guy in the future, I'd probably do a darker skin tone. It's all falling apart. Right, let's get this on the palette. Get some water in it. I think this one would take longer, we're at an hour and 25, it's not too bad. This guy's obviously had his hat tailored. First thing you do in theatre, make it so it doesn't do its job properly and looks alley. Get the rim folded and stitched by uh, the local tailor. <laughs> There's always one on camp. You're pretty much told on day one not to do it, and within like six hours you've done it. And then wonder why your neck burns. <laughs> Gotta love it. Gotta love it. No homemade camo paint in the feather face. Yeah, we're not gonna go with um a camouflage face. I honestly don't think the, <laughs> it would suit him. I don't even know. What would you would you do the the skin first and then the camo? Or would you just go straight to camo? Because nobody puts it on like you see in these videos and these films. Uh, that could work too. And the PSC should be coming out with some temp. All oh, right, plastic soldier. Oh yeah, because they're doing uh, North Ark, aren't they? So they will have um, some small-scale model moderns. I don't know. Have they already done small-scale stuff like that? And if so, what's the quality like? For any other range, any other... Uh, not even modern necessarily, just... Have they made infantry at that size before that are good quality? Because obviously plastic is a tough one to get right with smaller scales. Even Flames of War stuff is, is good detail, but we're talking about another, you know, considerable size reduction to get it to 10mm and then try and retain some details to, to be able to work with. Some of that I'm thinking about with the um, Team Yankee stuff was the infantry, because the box set, at least for the Brits, in fact, Go back. If you're still there, do you know if the German one you're talking about has infantry in it? Or if any of the starters do, fight guys. Because I've not. I've seen that they're available, but I don't know if the starter set's generally just armour and um, maybe some rotary wing or fast jet support. So I had to get the fingertips, which were a bit more awkward to get to than I thought they were going to be. Just 
should really be doing this with a small brush, eh? Especially around that camo. Yeah, let's, let's stop pushing my luck. <laughs> now, the team you can start, you got the boot camp, came with extra infantry, but it. They're not in the start set as normal. That's the. That's quite a while ago, that boot camp, isn't it? We're talking a couple of years, Rosmus? I've seen that infantry and it isn't very good if it's the one I'm thinking. It's pretty rough. I mean, it's fine. I mean, you can only do so much at certain scales with um, large production processes. And plastic. Although I imagine with enough money you can do pretty much anything with anything these days. But getting it to a factory that can produce at the standard that you could do with resin, maybe uh, the missing link. Wow, that long ago. Four or five years. And yours are still unpainted. <laughs> That's all. Yeah, you take after Jerry and not only height, eh? In that sense. <laughs> I love the fact that Jerry just pulls random stuff out. It's like, oh yeah, I've got that. Oh, I've got that. Oh, I've got that. Is it not kind of pointless having it all, though, if you just literally storage until you pass away and then somebody who knows nothing about it sticks it on eBay and it goes for cheap? In fact, I think he said at one point he might use all the metal to form his coffin of small soldiers, <laughs> melt it down and cast his own coffin. That'd be a genius way. And then you could use the plastic as the um, the decorative pieces. <laughs> what a way to go. Take all your minis with you. Buried with your dice. <laughs> your favourite ones, obviously. The ones that, ones that did you proud. Yeah, what happens to the minis of Holmes... When somebody, unfortunately, leaves this world. Not sure where they are since we moved here, which is why it was more four years ago. They're safely stored away, aren't they? They're in such a good, safe place. Somewhere in this house, my resin is in said same place. Or I've been hit by accident, which is quite possible in fact based on how small my place is and how much I tore it apart looking for it probable that I had it in the bottom of a plastic bag that I then used for a bin like an idiot if I did but spilt milk there's the back of the hand on the gun Cool, we'll let that dry and then we will chuck a wash over him and Raglan. This see this bag I think fits really well. It's enough of a different colour but not too much. I'm really happy with that. Right, so next layer of the camo. Oh no, we'll do the gun first. Uh bring the gun up with a little bit of Dawnstone. Mr Holland, painting camo I see. Yeah indeed, sir. Not really any specific I kind of had the British stuff in mind, using uh, that as a bit of a visual reference, uh, but then realised I'd rather I need to go green first and black to get that sort of pattern. But very happy with how this is coming out, just because it's more sort of desert orientated, which would kind of fit with the area, I suppose, for Benghazi. But we'll see. We shall see what we shall see. So, uh, another quick highlight. Like a 
magazine. So I've had a good day today, Ralph. I've done three from three. Hate you doing multicam. It is, it's more time consuming than I thought. It does make me question why I want uh, to do Team Yankee and have infantry in it. <laughs> Seems like a lot of a lot of work if I do. This is like one mini and it's even if I had them lined up, it's still just a slow process of adding each sort of different colour and layer. Surprising. It's surprising. Uh, although I was saying that, when I did my tanks for Flames of War, they were pretty time consuming as well. Uh, they weren't as complicated as this. I wasn't layering over. Um, so not as time consuming, but still reasonable. Yeah, I'm happy with the gun. I'm not going to go too far with. We're not going to go to white. I've moved away from that. Dawnstone has become my new sort of top layer. Stretch that up a bit. It's a bit, a bit low in his hand for some reason. Probably dropped him at some point. I don't know why I'm bothering because by the time it gets to G in America, it'll probably be a completely different shape again. Thinking about it. Let's make sure he's in. There we go. Uh, a final, just a little bit of an edge highlight on the boots, the wellies. I managed to make him look more like a boot than a welly, I think, which is good because I didn't want him to look like he was wearing wellies when he's all ready to go to war. Uh, you've seen the Abrams, which did travel okay. The Cobras, on the other hand, will never <laughs> be more than terrain. Uh, as he paints all his Spetsnaz and was jungle SSA and the four operators with camo. Oh, SAS, yeah. Yeah, I imagine there's quite a, a chunk of change in uh, time into those to get them done to any sort of level when it comes to camo. I imagine that's the the beauty of Spectre is it's still a low model count in, in the greater scheme of things when it comes to a, needing to do that sort of work. Oh, way too much on the brush, that was close. That would have left a, a nice smear across the model I'd have to have uh, tried to sort out. <laughs> oh, you did use a Spectre guide. Have they got a book? I didn't know they had. So they've got a book with their guide on how to do it, or is it uh, on a PDF? or Something you buy, I presume? Or are you just gone off the box art? Uh, PDF. Oh, it's for free. That's oh, sweet. Probably could have done me knowing that a few hours ago. <laughs> ah, well, it's like um, Rasmus was saying. He's definitely been down to the local camo shop and picked up some genuine, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, genuine uh, ex-military, locally produced... Ammo. Cool. Happy with that. So I'm gonna do the wash for the skin and then do the black. So I need Reichland flesh and shade. Yep. Uh, I'm gonna do it straight from the pot rather than thinning it down. Um, because I want him to be a darker skin tone. Uh, the first guy I did this way today. Second guy I watered it down to thin it. Um, take the edge off the colour. This guy will want to be a little bit darker, and we'll probably just do a single highlight because we've sunk a lot of time into him, and it's already an hour and forty. So quite a chunk of change in him. I can get rid of this on my phone now. 
because I'm more than committed to whatever I'm doing, <laughs> whatever camouflage this is meant to be. Uh, AK do a book for painting moderns. All right, yeah, I know AK. In fact, I've got some AK products. I get torn between AK and MIG because I like them both. They're pretty much the same thing, if I'm honest. They're just different, different nations and different, different people running them. Uh, but they do have different colours. So one does Africa dust that's lighter than the other. So by having them both, it is really good. Because the darker one, I use underneath the models in the desert to give them a shadow. And the lighter one, I then powder out around them to make it lighter as if it's in direct sunlight. So many tools you can use for scale modeling and for normal stuff if you, if you want to take your minis that far. behind his ears, make sure he's washed <laughs> just realise that washed is actually the right term so I could leave the black off at this point but I think it's kind of needed to bring down the tones a little bit on the uh, on all the gear AK MIG, Vallejo Army Payer, GW yeah there's so many, so many products Scale Force 9 Even small companies did quite a bit, like um, Foreground did some pigments, and I say smaller, it's probably not smaller, but that's not their, that's not their niche, is what I meant. Still my favourite trees, such a shame they had to stop doing them. They weren't cheap, but man, they're so awesome. Yeah, I think that skin tone's quite nice. I think just a basic highlight will bring him to where we want him to be. None of those here are Reaper either. Okay. Uh, to be honest, I sk the only reason I've got the MIG in that is for um, pigments and mud splashes. Everything else is sitting down there just so I, I know what I'm getting and I know what it... Like, the final sort of layer on this. Uh, because I want to keep his tones dark, like I said. Um, for his skin, and that'll be him pretty much done. That'll be model three of the day. So, earned m earned my sit rep pay today. In between doing my actual job a little bit as well. <laughs> oh, it was funny. I got the message at maybe half ten, quarter to eleven, of the stuff I needed to do, and I was starting the first <laughs> the first first stream at twelve. <coughs> Excuse me. Camo shade or earth shade to wash the camo? Yeah, I'm thinking about it. But do I want it to look like UK stuff, which was actually for Cold War, or do I want it to look more like it's a desert variant? We'll see how the black sits, and we'll go from there. I think. But yeah, I'm feeling a wash. We did talk about it a little earlier. Trying to decide whether it would be a brown or a. In fact, there's either the sepia or the, like you say, the earth shade. Camo, make it more green? Yeah, maybe. It's one of them tough calls, and you don't want to get it wrong because you're that invested at this point. I'm not feeling the black, to be honest, but too late now. Looks okay. Cheers, dude. It is what it is at this stage. I'm way too deep now. The good thing is, it's not for me anyway. I mean, don't get me wrong, I bought them, but they're going to the US. They're going to play out 
hopefully a few scenarios for uh, some podcast stuff, some video content. Hopefully, the patrons will get first look as well and a little bit of a nice buff for them. Or we can make prizes out of them, I suppose. For all our loyal followers. Saying I'm having jam on toast in a bit, I'm definitely sort of skipped tea because I had a big dinner and I had to do this. So I'm ready for some been ready for some food for a while I'm looking forward to I'm kind of speeding up now so I can get to the kitchen and stick my toast on <laughs> it's weird how you kind of evenly space them even though you shouldn't just because of how your your brain works, or my brain works. Toast, yeah. Lemon curd? No, I'm on strawberry jam today. I've never had lemon curd, thinking about it. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? As long as the sending out of prizes does not cost more than the Patreon bring in. Well, that's true. That is very true. Oh, I've got, I've got the Sergeant Sit Rep file now, so uh, that's a project I can do once I finish these. I'll print him off, try and get him to look half decent with the printer, and then stick some paint on him. That'd be nice. I've got, got that from G after the last episode. If you listened in, you, she said she'd. Uh, so I'm one of the patrons anyway, so. Got it sent to me. Uh, as a PDF, a uh, PDF, um, STL, because it'll save, save on the postage money. Cool. This feels very foreign as a camo scheme the way I've gone, but that's kind of good, because why would they have British? Anybody want to hazard a guess at what this kind of looks like colours wise? Need to get a printer. <laughs> uh, yeah. I've gone in on that um, Vietnam thing. So I'll be able to build Nam. Then when Piers' rules come out for. Is it Nam 63? Or Nam 68? I always. Uh, I was thinking about this the other day and I couldn't remember. Um, Ralph, uh, did you get it with supports or without? I hate doing the resin supports. Um, I got it with both, so I've got it with and without. Um, the new patron on Fallen from Titan Forge this month have also done auto supported, so they've already provided supports on their minis. Uh, I've tried a couple of them and they've worked really well. They're looking at potentially doing a, like an expansion of their patron to cover the costs of it. Uh, a little extra, you know, to to get stuff that's already done. Uh, I can do the others. I have had some success, but it's very hit and miss. I've only had it a week and a bit, so I'm still learning. Nam 68. Yeah, I thought it was. For some reason, I was getting myself convinced it was 63, which is I know not right, but I don't know. Um, yeah, we're talking about potentially doing a sit rep table at a at an event for Nam. If I can get the scenery up and running, I'll paint some minis up. Uh, but then, I've only just thought that, in all likelihood, if it was at something like Salute, surely Piers would already be there doing Nam 68. Yeah, such a time saver. And it just more likely to be successful as well. Because they've, they've at least tested it on some, some uh, printer of some sort. There's a lot of sums going on there, wasn't there? Empress Minis for Nam. Uh, don't know, don't know. I'd have to get in amongst it. If I can print them, I'd rather print them to be honest, because I can do better detail with the printer. It'll keep my costs down, as will the scenery. 
uh, but I don't think an event would want two tables for the same game anyway. So if um, and Piers' models are obviously stunning when he's painted them up, so in all likelihood, thinking about it, it'd have to be a local thing, which is not a problem. To do some of the local shows is a bit of fun. Here's some of the games that who knows what he would do. Yeah, I think it'd just be something that is um, is recent. If I, you know, it's his, his, if it's his most recent project, he's likely to be doing it. With the next show probably being Salute next year. Uh, at this rate, I can't see the August uh, UK Games Expo going ahead. Um, is Nam? It's not out yet, is it? It's still in a draft format, or is it? Good to go now. Uh, Piers has so many games. Oh, right, sorry, I've read that one. Yeah, I've never met the bloke, Rasmus, but he seems a nice guy. He's kind enough to send me some PDFs of how he's painted some of his minis, um, which he used to do for um, magazines, which was really cool. Um, I. I, I <laughs> Whether I do it the same way or not, I'm not sure. I was really interested more than anything to see the process that he puts into it to achieve what he does in 20 mil. Because I've been painting quite a few of the Flames of War infantry, and um, they're coming out quite nice. So yeah, I'm going to try what he does, try what I do, and see see which one has a better visual impact. Really, that was in draft. Yeah, I thought it was still in draft. Salute 21, who knows what the most recent would be, yeah. I think it's Salute 21, but again, if it's still not got a vaccine by then, which they're talking about potentially summer next year, um, then even that might not be um, the first one either. I'd hope it is. You know, I'd hope we'd be through it by then, to be honest. Well, I ain't counting no chickens. So what we're thinking for wash, that's not going to ruin it. I'm definitely going to do a thin one anyway, so there'll be uh, some Larian medium going into that bad boy. We're thinking sepia, agrax, camo shade. We think we need to add a green or a brown. It's probably the easier question to ask. Do we want any more? Vegetation, or do we want him more sort of dark desert? Again, it's quite nice that we've just sort of gone for a random pattern. Uh, I'd like to make it to the old world sometime in 21. Old world. Oh, I've got an itch. Oh, it's in an awkward place. Where's my itch in? That'll do. Flat-headed file. Perfect for reaching itches that other objects can't quite eat, reach. Cancelled a trip this summer already? Oh, that's a shame, dude. Uh, I've not cancelled yet because I need to see if they'll offer me uh, a change or something for EasyJet. To travel to Turkey to see my mum for her birthday. Um, it would have been her 71st. So that's been canned, I'd imagine. But they haven't declared it yet. Uh, so I can't do anything about it. They're offering a free change to a later one in the year, but it's one of them. Later in the year for me will be Christmas. And they haven't put up a lot of their flights for Turkey for Christmas yet, so I don't even know if they're travelling there. But I understand, I don't really want to... I don't mind doing the voucher thing, but I don't want to do... I've been bit by that before, so I'm... I'm in and ring a little at the minute. Let's break that area up a little bit. Same for in there. Cool, right, that leaves the hat.
So to wash or not to wash. I'll probably do the skin bit next before my. Uh, it shouldn't dry because I'm on a wet palette, but I've got a fan going as well, so that might actually have dried it out already. <laughs> Top of the head, hardest part of the body. It's a film quote. Uh, glad the gladiator, gladiator, and not Romans fighting in. It's a boxing one. In fact, has the guy in it from Cocoon that passed away recently, which is a shame. It was a good actor. I remember Cocoon very well. With when I was a youngster. In my flight of the navigator days. There's a little bit on the collar there to break that up. Uh, plan to hit the UK and Denmark in June. But that will not happen. That's a shame, dude. I think um, G and uh, Don were meant to go to a wedding in Germany. I think it was a wedding or a christening. Um, this year as well. And I imagine it's scuppered all that as well. Right, so we'll leave that alone for a second. We'll jump. Now, Bugman's has dried. That's what happens when you have a fan on a wet palette, doesn't help when you've got air drifting over it <laughs> on, a, on a reciprocating fan. So we'll chuck the wash on. We were quite heavy with it to keep it dark, so this should give me a reasonable uh, highlight. Again, I'm not going to bring your skin tone up too much because I don't want to. Showing our edges now, Fly the Navigator, hell yeah. Such a good film. And my dad used to have a Get Around by, um, it wasn't the Beach Boys, he had it by, it was Jan and Dean. Uh, but I know the Beach Boys did it, so when that song came on in the film, I definitely was jumping around the living room, singing along. Kind of want to break into song now, but I won't punish your ears with that, guys. And push my own as well. God, I love Fly the Navigator. I don't think you could do that justice anymore because sci fi is mainstream now. I mean, it was reasonably so then, but that was a, something a bit special. Maybe Netflix could do it or something, I don't know. I think a big budget would spoil it, a ridiculous budget. But yeah, it just doesn't have the... I don't even know if kids would like that type of thing now. BMX Bandits. Nicole Kidman when she was a young whippersnapper. I watched that. I remember watching that. Because I used to ride BMXs at the local track and stuff. Right, so I don't want to go too crazy up here. Let's do the nose. I'm going to keep the top part of it dark because it's kind of where the cap will come to. Top of the cheek, the bottom of the ear. Again, the cap will do some work. I'm just going to thicken that up a little bit on the cheek. More on the brush, switch sides. This side of the nose. This cheek's a bit deformed. <laughs> it's coming out towards the top lip The Last Starfighter somebody's bought the rights to remake that <laughs> Grieg Centauri I love the speeding bit the monster was quite good in that as well the makeup was good at the time but it's 
doesn't age very well. I think it was the first one with fully computer rendered uh, images um, for the space flight. But such again, what a great concept! I think is it a novel? Does it come from a novel? If it has, I must pick that up. That's one thing I've never read. Uh, it's like a like Ender's Game, um, which is a, a good novel. Oh, one of the short stories I really enjoyed, and I read it before the film, well, quite a few years before the film, was I Am Legend, which is such a good short story. Um, and the film is, is, is kind of had to fill out what wasn't in the story, so it's not quite the well, it's nowhere near the same, to be fair. I think we're going to be doing some repair work, so I've kind of rushed this. Thinking about old films. <laughs> My paint's drying up, it's a little thick. Uh, yeah, what's your space combat? Like, if five is the first TV you shot to do it, wow. Many, many moons ago. Rasmus, how old were you in 85, dude? Thirty? <laughs> they did most, if not all, of the Commodore Amigas. <laughs> I remember the Commodore Amiga. My neighbour had one. Uh, he had a fair chunk of cash. I remember being amazed by some Walker game where you used a mouse to shoot other people on the screen. And you had this Walker on the screen. Uh, but you couldn't move around too much. You had to finish everybody on the, the one screen before you could move to the next bit. But um, yeah, Skid Marks was a car game on it. I was fascinated with it because you could slide around corners. Um, hence Skid Mark. Um, it would leave behind a trail. And I was really good at it. I had a good um, perception for... Uh, if I was driving in a different direction, like down the screen, I'd still turn the right way. Whereas he wouldn't. He didn't have the, the ability to turn it round in his brain. So he'd often turn the wrong direction. That's an old memory, that one. Was it Wings? I remember Wings being a World War One Sotworth Camel-style game on... I think it was the Amiga. Might have been older. Used to crash a lot. B5. It must have been the Commodore Amigas, I think. 11 or 12 ish. Oh, not too bad then. I think, what was I? 85. I was about 7. 6 to 7. It's got me beat by a little bit. That's why you've got all that extra colour in your beard. <laughs> right, I think. I'll bring up the chest a little. Point at the chin. Center of the nose, just the edge of the top of each cheek. Yeah, happy with that. And then, there's some areas I'm not happy with with the skin. Oh, oh that's gone right to it. I ran my, I've just run my teeth down that bit of the <laughs> taking the paint off, and that really went through me. <laughs> oh. Making my feet tap. <laughs> you were 15. Oh my God, you're old. <laughs> 15. <laughs> so where I've gone a bit too far on the sides of the face here, I'm just gonna. I've took some more of the wash out the pot just to bring the colour back a bit fifteen <laughs> that's fifteen I feel it at the moment what fifteen or oh, old <laughs> hey we're talking about last starfighter <laughs> this is not exactly a recent thing You can tell it's not recent because they didn't. You still have to go and use a phone. <laughs> Touch 
the edge out here. Need to smooth that out just a touch. So I'm going to go the opposite direction than I did, just to bring it so it's more linear. Let's go under the nose. nearly there. I think I just need to bring it back up a touch so really thin down the bugmans. It's close. It's just a couple of areas at the top that need to come back up. So he doesn't look like he's grimacing too much. <laughs> the ears, top of the hand, yeah well happy with that, that's good enough, right now the scary bit, do I wash the camo, yeah it's too clean isn't it, I think it's going to have to be a brown, right, balls to the wall, if you're going to do it, do it right, so I'm going to go with a uh, sepia, seraphim sepia, uh, I'm going to thin this bad boy, because uh, if it goes wrong then I've got a chance. <laughs> so I'm going to use the actual Larian medium for it as well. Gulp. This could be 2 hours and 10 minutes. That's not too bad considering the level of camera we've done actually. Uh, wasted. <laughs> Might be going, going in the uh, maths tomorrow. <laughs> we shall see what we shall see. Cool, right, so that's some of that there. Let's clean the brush, clean it on the sponge, get all the excess off, swallow it, make sure it tastes right. Yep, it's a good year. Uh, one dollop of Larian Medium. Let's see how thin that text is. Yeah, I think that's alright. Because I still want enough brown to darken it down. Uh, I don't know if that'll last over the whole thing. It should do, but looking at it. Right, guys. I don't want to do it. <laughs> it sure will get deep in that butt crack. I'm going to keep a reasonable amount on the brush. have to give this time to dry to decide whether it needs anything else. Maybe another layer for example, or maybe it wasn't the right wash and we need to potentially do the green as well, which I might do looking at it. But I'll give it a minute or so to dry and then decide. Good thing is I've got the fan going so it shouldn't take long. <laughs> Been drying the palette all night. Third, it's my neighbours. Third door, third. <laughs> They're so ignorant, it's quite funny. Third, <laughs> third. I don't know if it's the kids or the adults. <laughs> I don't know why they need to open and close the door every time. Anybody had just bought or something and stuck it in the doorway so they didn't have to do it. Oh, well. Getting towards the end of the ink now, so we had about the right amount. A 
Oh, that made it pop straight away. That's quite cool. Yeah, I think we'll let it dry and then do a green as well. It's just deciding which one to do. So I like how it's doled it down. On the trousers, it's started to dry already. Mm -hmm. Clean the brush. Yes, but that would be too easy. <laughs> right, which greens have we got? Bonnie and Camo shade. And BL Tan. BL Tan will be too bright. Just remind myself what a Thorny and Camo shade is like. Just like our dog that wants to be with you when he is out, when he's in. It's going to take a bit of this to put it on the palette. I can't even see what it is in that colour. Oh yeah, that's definitely a darker sort of combat green, isn't it? Uh, and then I've got Corellia green, Coelia green shade. Ooh, that looks very punchy. I don't think that one's going to work. Hmm... So this one's like a brown and this one's like a green. We've got all the browns on it, so actually the green shade might be a shout. Hmm. It's almost there, it's just a matter of picking the right one at this stage, I think. Um Happy with the bag. Happy with the like the undershirt that's coming out. Happy with the boots, happy with the gun, the GU. Uh, in fact, we'll do a quick highlight at the top of the gun while we wait. And grab a bit of more fang and a bit of my lighter colour, which will go with the. In fact, we we'll just use a, a bit of the Dawnstone actually. So, oh, I've still got some left on the palette. I should bring it up a little bit. Yeah, it does. Clean the brush. Yeah, so we're nearly there, guys. Thank you very much for tonight. Uh, just gotta let that dry first and carry on in a second. It's been a busy day, actually. I'll have to clock up my hours at the end to see uh, what I need to put into the tracking the hours for the project. Should be uh, a reasonable chunk today. Oops, stomach grumbling. <laughs> so it's like why have we not eaten good food yet <laughs> you said we were having <laughs> I remember you saying you said it live it's, it's definitely real when you said it live uh, I need to lighten it up a bit more oh stomach again oh my god what time is it oh it's just after 9 it's kind of late to be eating as well it's a good job I don't have to get up early tomorrow I knew I'd still be up early. I was bloody on. If I make it to 7 o'clock, it's late. Yeah, and the crazy thing is, it doesn't even matter what time I go to sleep at. So, let's just do an edge highlight on the, on the stock to start with. And then let's do a couple of says it's already dried there we go try again some very light striations barely seen to be honest which is what we want Force that edge once more. Thank you for distracting me from work. <laughs> is that a good thing or a bad thing, buddy? That is the question. <laughs> no, it's been good. It's been good. So the top is just drying the last bits, but the bottom is dry. 
So the good thing is it's toned it down. So we'll do the second risky maneuver on the trousers. I tried to live with a 12 year old where the bedtimes have for no reason fallen by the wayside. Yeah, that's not good. Not good. Bad daddy. <laughs> Will that be enough? I need one more based on what we did for the other one. Right. This is, again, going to either go up. That one's fine. I'm happy with that. I've toned it down nicely. And I always push my luck. That's part of my uh, hobby problem when it comes to stuff like this. I keep going until I actually make a mess of it and wish I hadn't bothered for a layer. But I've not tried this before, so, again... We've done a random camo pattern that's been plucked out of the air from no particular place. So why not? So this is a very thinned out, well, very, a reasonably heavily thinned down. Uh, cor cor what the hell is it? Coelia Green Shade from Citadel. Definitely punching the green up. She stays up later than me. <laughs> oh, if it's a girl and she's 12, that's because she runs the house, dude. Surely. That's how it works, isn't it? <laughs> I imagine they're a boss at that age. Not far enough. Yeah, the green was a good choice to finish to bring it back to sort of more that Combat 95 look. I don't know if it'll dry showing it, but certainly helping with the initial visual. Oh, that's still the wife. <laughs> She's just the ex, so... <laughs> yeah, I forget. <laughs> there's the boss, and then there's the boss. <laughs> Sorry, the boss. Very arc style. D the boss. How tall is your wife, dude? Because obviously you're quite a big chap. You'd probably what six six. Is she a tall lady as well, or I'm just interested to get the visual of a a giant a giant Viking of a man stood next to uh, uh, his wife, and he's twelve year old. Is you, yeah? Is it sort of passed down the genes to to the daughter, or is she tall for age? My friend's daughter was playing basketball for like two years above her because she was so tall at 13 that most people didn't believe that she was of an age. And she could compete at you know a higher level as well because of the height. And the fact she played for a very long time, but um, the height was a, a key factor, as you can imagine. That message is not important. No, I'm good. In fact, I should probably turn it off now. It's late at night anyway, and anybody that um, needs to get hold of me for work-related stuff can suck it till tomorrow. That's definitely greenified it. It's muddied it up quite a bit, but I like it because it's give it sort of a a dusty used look to it. It wasn't there before. Let's get below the rim on the hat. Oh, she's only five foot. Five foot two! Bloody hell! <laughs> That's awesome, dude. Your daughter's 
Your daughter's five foot five five. Your daughter's taller than a mum at twelve. That means that she must be a tyrant, as in the wife, when it comes to the daughter arguing. Because if you're already shorter, you need to be louder <laughs> than the daughter to, to keep them in line. That's how I imagine that works. I don't know how Steve does it with my mate. He's got five daughters. Uh, two sons. But it, all the middle kids are daughters. So there's this pecking order they must have at home. So, I dread to think. Can you imagine five daughters going at it at once. He must just stick his head in the sand and, and just not come up for air. Just wait for it all to pass. <laughs> cool. Cool, cool, cool. Right, we'll let this bad boy dry. Um, I'm happy. Uh, it's not ruined it, it's actually weathered it almost. So it's brought back down to more of the green that we saw in sort of the British one. Uh, it feels very Eastern European, if I'm honest. Uh, I've seen some of the camo serving with nations in Europe that, that have a, a sort of a similar similar look. Uh, the bag is a really nice contrast. Having the bright sort of bag has come out really nice. Uh, one kid is enough for me. <laughs> uh, happy with the face, happy with the gun, happy with the model as a whole. The boots look nice. Not There are wellies. But I just couldn't do them as wellies if we could help it. So I went for black wellies and they've actually turned into a sort of boots, which is quite nice. Uh, I'm a big fan of that. So, yeah, um, that's three from three today. Uh, this will not happen again. <laughs> uh, but very happy with how he's turned out. Uh, thank you to everybody today from the, all the different streams that have, that have tuned in to support us. Uh, it's much appreciated, obviously. Having somebody at the other end of the chat really helps me keep going and concentrate as well. Uh, I say concentrate, I've probably screwed up everywhere. <laughs> Just looking at the top of there, making sure I've done that bit. Um, so stay safe out there, guys. Um, I will be back. I've got two minis left, so we've got RPG guy. Uh, this young gentleman, like we said, with the earphones on. Uh, in his... Uh, in his I do love that he's got an upgrade from flip flops uh, to his Crocs. Couldn't think of the name then. I think it mogs for some reason. I've no idea what a mog is, but uh, it was in my head. Uh, and then we've got the probably what I'm going to do last because I really like this model. Uh, I don't think there'll be that much extra on him. I just want to do a really clean job. He's in boots, baggy trousers, heavy jacket. I, I just imagine it being that sort of brown jacket uh, and a light blue, a dark blue. Um, headdress on and he's bare chested under it which is quite funny so those are the two to go hey ralph next time it'll be four from four no because i'd have to buy more minis for that uh so we're good to go with this guy he's finished and uh i will catch you at the next one cheers guys here's a quick uh, message from our sponsors uh black site studios check them out if you want any uh terrain most of you that have been tuned into the chat know that already let's go back thank you for tuning in as well uh, much appreciated, and uh, I will catch you all soon. Take care out there, guys. Bye-bye. Are you looking to become a Tier 1 operator in the gaming world? Elevate your games with Black Sight Studio Terrain.